being a driver is, is probably one of the most stressful. Especially in London. Especially, yeah. And in, uh, you know, in built up just, areas. Just very, very difficult uh, to manoeuvre around. When we then come up to say a roundabout, a zebra crossing, somewhere where, like on your hazard perception, where mm -hmm. you might click the button. Okay. We then switch to like a short woo 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 tone. Yeah. Um, and that is loud. It's designed to sort of make you look and make you think, right, you know, like at a roundabout. People guys welcome back to Clearview Driving my name is Ammon and today we're doing something different today I have Matt with me Hello. who is a firefighter so today we're going to be going through and asking Matt some questions about how to deal with blue lights and emergency vehicles kind of from their point of view so introduce yourself uh, hey my name is Matt um, as Ammon said I'm a firefighter I've been doing it for six years now um, I have been driving for coming up 20 years um, so mainly cars, but obviously in the last couple of years, lorries. So I've got my LGV license. Um, I've also done a two week intensive blue light course. Oh, nice. Um, so I thought it'd be really useful just to come on, answer any questions, worries, concerns, um, because, you know, we do see a lot of, uh, situations yeah. that arise in front of us that, that yeah, learners People normally not... panic, especially with learners. They just, they, yeah. they panic even more than the average driver. Yeah. And there's lots of things that you can do and there's, you know, often, Less is more mm -hmm. with dealing with emergency vehicles. Um, okay, so we're going to be going through the typical questions that learners have when it comes to dealing with blue lights and fire engines in particular in this video. So these are some questions that I've had my learners ask me and ask me online. So I'm going to go right into it. So you're ready for this? You're in the hot seat. Ready. Okay. Okay. So the first question everyone always asks me yep. is if you're waiting at a red light mm -hmm. and a fire engine turns up behind with their blue lights on, mm -hmm. can I go through a red light? That's a really good question because we see so many different reactions to this when we, when we come up. So the short answer is no. The long answer is that as an emergency driver, mm -hmm. I shouldn't be using any form of bullying or intimidation to get you through that red light. Yeah. So what a good blue light driver should do is hang right back turn the sirens off mm -hmm. whilst keeping the blue lights on wait for the lights to change to green and then put the tones back on yeah meanwhile you as a driver sat at the red light just compose yourself just think about what you're going to do when the lights yeah. go green because most times what i see is i do see traffic starts to go through and kind of make space which mm -hmm. i get but you're not allowed mm -hmm. and then learners look at that and go oh i should be moving forward too yeah Exactly, and the thing is, they're not so common nowadays, but if that red light does have a camera attached to yeah. it and you go through and you trigger that camera, That's it. unfortunately, the fire brigade, the ambulance service, the police aren't gonna pay the fine. Yeah, and so if you do go through, you will not be able to appeal that red light, mm -hmm. so deal with it safely, guys. Okay, so going into the next one. So if I'm driving along mm -hmm. and I've got an emergency vehicle, blue lights, fire truck, approaching behind mm -hmm. can I go into a bus lane to give way uh, again short answer is no because the uh, authority whoever it is um, the emergency uh, company behind the vehicle isn't gonna pay the fine for you okay. it's gonna fall on you would you go into the bus lane to get through yes so we are allowed to go into okay. bus lanes on blue light situations okay um, and under some circumstance if we've agreed it with the local authority we can drive through them oh even without the blue times light. as well oh, nice. to I didn't, avoid I traffic didn't know that. um if it means us getting back to station and being operational quicker oh i see and again with the bus lane fines you can't appeal them either not as far as i know that's what i thought <laughs> can i mount the pavement to make space um again this is a, a known people do this all the time i see the logic you're driving a car you see this big fire engine coming up behind you you think i'm going to create some space by going up the curb um, if you were to do it without looking and you knock someone over, there's a cyclist, yeah. e-scooter, you know, these are mm. really common nowadays. Um, someone walking with headphones and, yeah. and, and you make contact with them, again, you shouldn't be on that pavement. So yeah, guys, you are not allowed to mount the pavement. Just deal with it safely on the road. Mm -hmm. And they're trained to deal with these things as exactly. well. Whereas we're exactly. kind of just, people go into a bit of a panic at that point. Mm -hmm. So we go through an intensive course, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, and it's our job to show you what we want you to do, if that makes okay. sense. So if you see someone coming up behind you, say in a fire engine, and you're in a, I don't know, in a, in a two lane road, mm -hmm. dual carriageway, if you start seeing more of the fire engine in your right mirror, we want you to move left. Yeah. If you start seeing more of it in your left mirror, okay. we want you to move right. 
Um, we will never get right up behind you. You know, we'll give you enough space to think about what you're doing, but it's our job to look as far down the road as we can and to create space. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. So, okay, the lights are red down there. The traffic's going to back up. What's, oh yeah, because you guys have to look right we have to away plan. and really we have know to, what's going on yeah. next. Yeah. Um, so planning and observation, and, and it's the same, you know, when, when you're in a car. Mm -hmm. Take a breath, think about, right, are there any signs? Are they showing me what to do? Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's great. And sometimes just myself. carrying on and finding yeah. somewhere safe to pull over is the best thing. That's it. So this next one, I don't actually know the answer to myself, but why do some fire engines sound different? As in, why does the sound change? Um, so we have three different siren types and they're used for, uh for they've got slightly different meanings so there's a long what we call a whale mm -hmm. um which is a, a long tone that sort of rises up and then falls down again um oh, and yeah. that's basically that pushes the sound the furthest okay so that is how we get people far down the road an early indication of ah something's coming up behind me mm -hmm. when we then come up to say a roundabout a zebra crossing somewhere where like on your hazard perception where mm -hmm. you might click the button okay we then switch to like a short Woo, woo, woo tone yeah um and that is loud it's designed to sort of make you look and make you think right you know like at a roundabout people in four different directions when you so get you'd lots of attention have the first one on and then switch it to the yes. second so okay. you always switch it to that one when you're coming up to something that mm -hmm. is dangerous or mm. where you need everyone's attention i see um and then typically the nino is the third one that's, <laughs> that's not the one everyone knows yeah. the most <laughs> so you, you probably won't hear that as as much um in a fire engine that's predominantly designed if there are two fire engines the first one will use the the ones that we just spoke about mm -hmm. and then the second one will stay on nino mm -hmm. um, and that is just so that it stands out and it's different that's making so much more sense now because i'm thinking back to when i've seen two fire engines together mm -hmm. yeah um, and yeah. the, the main reason for that is, you know, as a driver, I've done it. You see one come through and you think, okay, I'll get out of the way. Right, that fire engine or that police car or that ambulance has come through. I'll pull back out. Yeah. And if you do that without looking and there is a second one, um, obviously that can, that that can create issues. Can spurt, we'll but then we're it. trained as the second driver to not assume that because the first one's got through that we can get through. Yeah. So it's almost like the first one comes through, you then reset find somewhere else safe to pull over mm -hmm. it's like it starts again yeah but it's our job to get through safely but you guys at the end of the day for you guys it's about making sure that you're not creating any situations mm -hmm. here trying to get you to your yeah. emergency yeah and it, it sounds really counterproductive but we're not in a rush we we have this <laughs> mantra of drive to arrive a lot of the times you know when i've been in really busy roundabouts and i'm there trying to get out of the way and as mm -hmm. soon as i get out of the way and i look over i'm like they're so chilled mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we have exemptions, so you know, we can break the speed limit, you know, we can go down um, one way roads, okay, you know, we can go uh, the wrong side of the road, but they are literally exemptions, they don't give us a right to drive like, yeah, of course, you'd have to make you sure you know, mad people safe to do exactly, it is you're doing. you know, as I say, we need to drive to arrive, we need to make sure that we get to the incident. Mm -hmm. It's no use if we hit a car on the way and there's somebody's house Doesn't on fire, suck, yeah, so it's our job to create the space and it's our job to, mm -hmm. to drive safely. So another question that uh, learners have been asking is why do the fire engines turn off their sirens? So all of a sudden, as they're driving through, the sirens just turn off suddenly. Yeah, so if you hear the sirens turn off and the blue lights are still on, mm -hmm. um, goes back to the red light at the roundabout, it's when we want you to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And when I say nothing, I mean continue sort of driving as normally. Yeah. We don't want you to get out of our way. Um, so there are some instances, for example, on a double white line, we're not allowed to overtake mm -hmm. on the blue lights oh, on yeah. a double white line. Okay. Um, or in a tunnel. If we go through a tunnel, say on the motorway, we have to turn our sirens off because oh, yeah. otherwise yeah. it would just cause so much yeah. noise um, <laughs> and be really counterproductive. I didn't even think of that one actually, yeah. So if you hear the sirens on, it's okay, you know, make your observations and try and find somewhere safe to, mm -hmm. to, to pull over. If the sirens turn off, we literally just want to follow you because we can see that it's either not safe or we can't make any progress past you. Okay. Um, how would you expect pedestrians and cyclists to deal with you? How would you want them to deal with you? This is a really good question. Obviously, in an ideal world, we would want everyone to hear, everyone to see, you know, know exactly which direction we're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, people are busy. People are trying to get to places. You know, people have headphones in, people have music on. Um, you know, people are riding bikes and scooters and... <sighs> It's it's a real tricky one. All I would say is 
whenever you come up to a junction, whenever you come up to a zebra crossing, a traffic light, somewhere where you think, okay, I should just have an extra little look here, have that little extra look. Yeah, I think as the, like with the hierarchy now in place, mm -hmm. with pedestrians being at the top of the hierarchy, mm -hmm. Yes, it's safe, but a lot of the times I feel like some pedestrians, especially with those um, noise cancellation mm -hmm. headphones, yep. and they don't even look, mm -hmm. it's not just about, okay, we'll give way. Yeah. They could be putting themselves right into danger, and yeah. not, they can't hear anything outside. And then just... it's, it's a tricky one, because, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of pressure as a blue light driver, because, you know, you've got the responsibility of getting there safely. The person who's having a bad day, who's, you know, potentially having a fire or is involved in a car crash, You've got the the people uh, in the fire engine with you. Mm -hmm. You've got all the pedestrians, the cyclists, the other motor drivers. Being a driver is, is probably one of the most stressful, especially in London. Especially, yeah, and in uh, you know in built up just, areas. It's just very very difficult uh, to manoeuvre around. But that's why we have training, and you know it's our job to make sure that we get there safely. Okay, I think we're on our last question now. Okay, might not even be a question. It's just. <laughs> Okay, this last one, it's just to kind of quickly summarize up how you would like the drivers out there to deal with you. So you're driving along, mm -hmm. um, sorry, I'm driving along mm -hmm. and an emergency vehicle's turned up behind. What would you like me to do as a driver of this car? So the only way I can sort of put it into words is to do like a 360 of your car. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you're looking either from the top down or you're able to do a 360 and think, right, what is around me? Yeah. How can I position my vehicle so that I can offer the most help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that involves taking a breath, maybe carrying on an extra 100 yards. Mm -hmm. um, what sometimes happens is people panic and slam their brakes on and get out of the way. Yeah. But if you stop and there's an island in the middle of yes, the road, that's it, yeah. it sometimes can make it worse. Um, as you can imagine, in a big truck, momentum is key. So if we have to stop and start and stop and start. Yeah, definitely. Um, so always be aware of obstructions, even if they're on the other side of the road, like uh, Road furniture, vehicle. we call it, yeah. Yeah. Or street furniture, yeah. So lampposts, islands, zebra oh, crossings. Oh yeah, definitely, you've got to think of those things as well. Um, even other cars, you know, if two cars pull up opposite oh, yeah. each other. I always say that to my learners. I'm like, okay, when you're stopping, you've got to consider where the opposite side of the road traffic mm -hmm. is because you're trying to keep that middle middle of the road clear mm -hmm. for that fire truck to just be able to breeze through. That's right. That's it. And just remember, you know, it's it's our job to try and show you what we want you to do. Okay. You know, no one's going to shout at you. No one's going to, you know, it's our job to get there safely and to, you know, to get you home safely as well. Okay, great. Thank you for answering all of our questions. It's been a pleasure. So these are all the questions that you guys did ask and hopefully you know how to deal with blue lights and fire trucks in particular going forward with this information. So they're trained and they'll tell you what you want to be doing on the road. So just be alert and try and stay calm and deal with it safely as we always say. Now before we finish up the video, I'm going to leave it to Matt to introduce this charity. Um, right, yeah, thank you. Um, Amman kindly asked earlier if there's any form of charity associated with the fire brigade and um, and there is it's really easy to find it's it's called the firefighters charity um, they do a lot of brilliant work obviously being a firefighter can take a big toll on your body on your mind um, you know there's outside stresses in life especially you know there's a lot going on at the moment for people so mm. we have um, a group of fantastic um, men and women up and down the country who, who look after us um, it is a charity so you know it does rely on donations so you know we all pay in from our salary um you know because we sell ourselves as one big family yeah um that's and, you know, amazing yeah it's it's, it's it is really it's, it's it's so nice you know because we've got each other's backs you know it's like a family mm -hmm. um you know all, all the people on my station came to our wedding when when i got married so it's oh. it's, it's it's you know it's, it's really nice um and if you're having a bad day, if you get injured, if you just want a break from it, or you can pick up the phone to the firefighters charity and say, look, I'm struggling, and they will give you help. Whether it's no residential way. stays, so there's a number of places around the country where you can take your family yeah. just for a week just to get away. Um, they do rehab, they do physio. That's really amazing. I think that's definitely necessary. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you guys uh, would like to donate, I'm gonna leave the link down in the description. Be sure to check it out. Um, yeah, and thank you for being here today for Thanks answering for our questions. <laughs> This isn't the end of the video guys, we're now going to do a mock test and you guys will see this in a few days time but we're going to see how Matt gets on on the roads. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> but thank you, bye. Hey.